both wearing green. Love it. We always do I this. Lo- I know, I love it. I think it's cute. I'm coming to you live from my bed today. This is where I will be taking all my meetings for the remainder of the day. Of the week, actually. That's good. I love to hear that. As you know, I'm a big proponent of resting. Yeah, you are. Look at that sweatshirt. Look at that L&A merch that I still don't have. I know. I've never once need... gotten any one single piece of our merch. <laughs> you have the early stuff. I have nothing. The f- yes, you have pink. You have... That's not true. You have stuff. I have nothing. I would know if so I had where's... it. I have no pink. So I have little... no red. Where's the little cutie? Um... You give me one baby tee that my tits hang out the bottom of. <sighs> well, maybe they should be less saggy then. <laughs> Well, we all know that's not true. <laughs> I know, we all know that's uh, not accurate. <sighs> Show off. So here we are. Here we are. I'm back in LA. You can tell how <laughs> excited I am about that. Yeah, that sucks. And you're in the fabulous countryside posting pictures that almost do me in. Your Christmas kitchen and your field with the sheep. I was driving oh. and I almost sideswiped a curb. I was so upset. Why are you watching stuff when you're driving, you freak? <laughs> because that's what you do in LA. Your car is your office. Because you're going two miles an hour in traffic. I'm not going to get into this with you on the show. Don't fucking do that. Listen, <laughs> noted. That's so, that is so okay, dumb. I, I love do you. <laughs> I won't do it. But yeah, your, your life. It's quite nice, my life. It yeah, is it really nice. is. So how are you? I'm good. Wow, I'm you've sore. learned nothing from all those examples I gave of how to answer that question, truthfully. I would prefer you don't ask me that question right now. <laughs> I'm feeling very triggered right now, and <laughs> I'll get back to you. I'm good. I am so sore. I did my first did you have sex? dancing class. No, not in my pussy. Um, but I did have sex since we last spoke, thank God. <laughs> we spoke two weeks ago. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. I had some of I had some of the most insane sex I've this is, I don't want to talk about this. Insane? Is that a good thing? Yeah. Insane in a good way? Yeah, yeah. Or? It was yeah, no, it was it, like it was I had great. the most psychotic sex. <laughs> yeah, it was actually psycho and Alex in jail. Um <laughs> Oh, he broke several he broke several laws. No wonder um, you're sore. No, Jesus. No. I'm sore because I did my first pole dancing class since <gasps> I left LA. Oh, I know it was she's so back. Good. It felt so good. The queen really is back. To, I needed to do something with like my physical energy because mm-hmm. I just realized that I wasn't um, I can't remember when we last spoke, but I was feeling very constipated in every single way. Here she goes, and... ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Get it out. Come I on, was, let's go. I was feeling... Well, I can now because I'm not constipated right. anymore. I was feeling constipated. I'll be taking a tea break while you talk about this with the listeners. Go ahead. No, I was constipated in the traditional way, but for ages. And then I was also constipated... Emotionally? Like, emotionally. Oh, right. And I just like couldn't cry. And as we know, last week was the two-year anniversary since losing Ryan and Max. Yes. And I, like, needed to get energy out, and I just couldn't. And I remember I told you about the giggling that I did. Yes. But then I was like, I need more. Like, I need to get more out. And I couldn't. So I had a cry, but, like, I couldn't. It, like, wouldn't all come out. And I felt like I wanted to scream. And I felt like I wanted to like smash things i'm not gonna like smash up my own house and i just realized i need kind of a physical output that's Mm. very intense i think and even if like at the worst of times it's going for a run which is not something i love to do then you know that's what i need to do i think i i think it's getting i'm getting too pent up energetically and historically i am a very athletic person so i think the fact that i have taken this time off has been great in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. um but it's also maybe not 
sustainable for me to be like an inactive i'm never inactive but like i am not doing something (laughs) that's physically like physical exertion basically yeah Um, it's really important it's really really important it's tricky because i've been doing all i've been really trying to heal myself with my eating disorder stuff and it's been we haven't really talked about it much on here but it's been really profound this year and it's difficult i don't exactly know where to put this need for emotional need for physical exertion with the healing that i'm doing because i'm confused i'm like is this unhealthy that i want to kind of frequently exercise and that i feel like i need it like would some people be like oh that's an addiction it's not like you're running 10 miles a day or anything i know it's i'm just trying to find the balance because i've gone from being extremely physically active to not being physically active and really just doing whatever i want to do which has been for the last six months just going for walks or not doing anything or just stretching i haven't been doing a sport and what I realized during that time was that I was forcing myself to work out for reason for like obsessive kind of eating disorder reasons. It wasn't mm. even like to be thin. It was like the the voice in the head going like, "No, you have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this." You felt that manic and now that manic yeah, thing. Yeah, like if I don't do it, I had self loathing feelings, mm. um, which is so unhealthy. So I was really trying in the last few months to move past that because I think that's all like tied up with the eating disorder mentality. I have the opposite. I wish I had self-loathing about not working out. I'm like, should I feel bad about this? Because I don't. Well, the thing that is concerning about it is that you'll seize up as as you get begin to like age like profoundly i know i'm making light your... of it but i my body i i do need to take responsibility for this no and... that's the yeah. thing i'm like i'm not like a workout shamer like i understand that not everyone enjoys it i just think purely from the perspective of like i mean it keeps you young and it keeps you going and it keeps your body yeah in good moving. shape yeah it keeps you moving that's literally yeah, i mean otherwise I you see you seize up and that's when people become you know crippled basically yeah, it's but, true it's very true um, this is actually a really serious no it is thing. and it's 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 hard to talk about it without being like sounding like you're shaming somebody for like oh you're not exercising more and that's not what it is at all it's like a genuine like health concern and yeah, i think I... The, one of the things i've seen with family members close to me is like is I have seen not old people, but older people in their 70s or early 70s, like seizing up when I see other people in their 70s climbing and running and being active. And the hands and feet and backs of other family members are like seizing up because they're not, they're inactive. And then also the other thing, which I didn't really realize until recently is like, if you don't work your core, you can become incontinent. So your pelvic floor, so if that goes completely, that's when you start pissing and shitting yourself. I see. You get older. And it's like, uh, that ain't going to be me. Did you see <laughs> Did you see the video I posted on our Instagram this morning of our sex therapist talking about working out your pelvic floor? No, I didn't go on our Instagram today. <laughs> you're welcome for that, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. So back to what you're saying. Um you started your pole dancing. So now I can't move. <laughs> so that's a good thing for you. How often do you do it? Yeah. Well, I've been on Monday. I'm going to go on Thursday. So that all the classes are really far away from me because I live really rurally. So it's like a big time commitment. It's it's a three hour round. Oh, wow. I know. It's a lot. It's a lot. So I need to find somewhere close to me, basically. Well, I was going to ask, um, how are the pole dancing classes in the middle of... <laughs> Yeah, they're not. There is one near here that's at a a university and it's just for students. And I was thinking about maybe contacting them and either asking if I could join or like 
seeing if I could use their facilities and have a private thing. I don't know. I like don't even have anywhere I can put a pole here. And I guess so, like since you live in the forest, you really don't need a pole. You can just use trees, right? I mean, yeah, if you want a splinter in your vulva, sure. I'm sure Alec could just sand a tree for you to make it smooth enough. Yeah, I still not something I would do, yeah. I don't know. I think you could really start something. I think that would really go viral. Just taking advantage of poor trees. Viral in the sense I would probably get a viral infection from some kind of tree fungus. <laughs> yeah, it would go viral in many ways. But I am so out of shape that I am so sore. I literally can barely pull up my own knickers after I pee. So oh. I'm in a very um, vulnerable state. And yesterday, I had, when I was trying to reverse my car, I had to use two hands to move the gear. Oh, because I like bad. didn't have the strength to pull my... <laughs> That's real sad. It's quite tragic. I know it is. So I'm going to go tomorrow again to another one and limber up. Hopefully, um... Hopefully I'll be fine. Just, I feel like two times I'll be sore and then I'll be fine. And the poles are different here. Everything's different. They call everything something different. And it's not like, it's not like in a, in my place in America, Seventh Dimension, where it's like you're in the club and you're like a dancer and you wear your fishnet things and you go in and wear your shoes and you're like, you're going to dance. Here it's like very much pole acrobatics and it's gymnastics. And they're wearing galoshes. Yeah, it's, like, very, um, like, sporty, which is fine and good, and it will get me nice and fit and strong. But also, I really need to find a place where I can just, like, twerk and, like, be disgusting and just physically, like, lick my body along surfaces. Yeah, I know. That's what you love. And I just need to do that with my body. Yeah. If it's clockwise around the pole in America, it's probably counterclockwise in England. <laughs> exactly we um we go on the other side of the pole right um but also the poles are smaller so like whereas the pole is bigger in america you can like sandwich it between your leg fat mm. and it hold on and like your hands can grip it easier but it's thinner here so like you try and like grip it with your legs and it's just are you mm. sure it's thinner <laughs> and that your legs aren't just bigger now no, 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 no. My legs are bigger. Maybe but you got not... fatter. No, no, I did. I definitely <laughs> got fatter. But the but the poles, the, it's the opposite thing, whereas the pole just, like, slips through your legs. I don't think the pole got not... smaller, Annabelle. No, it did. Okay. No, you, I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. I'm joking. Yes, I get it. That must be yeah. very strange to get used to. What are you going to do about that? I don't know. Find a bigger pole. There's like a 40 wow. inch pole and like a 28 or I don't know, whatever. It's there's like a thick one and then there's a thin one. I I don't know why they're different here. They just only have thick ones in America. Wow. Yeah, everything's <laughs> bigger in America. Yes, right. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm really glad you're doing that again. Yeah, it felt so good. It felt so 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 good. Good. So I can't wait for tomorrow, and I love it. Good. But I just I was like dreaming about pole dancing, so I'm I know. glad to be back. Good back in the game. Can we hear a bit about how Thanksgiving actually was for you? Yeah, it was interesting. It was. Um, I felt like okay because I feel like I did my brewing and I did my spazzing out slowly over the build up rather than keeping it together and then letting it all out mm -hmm. um and you made a plan and i made a plan and we went off to the cotswolds to you know a couple of places that i know make me really happy and i really enjoy and it was beautiful great on the day itself i felt okay i felt very quiet it was weird i just was very quiet all day and that's unusual for me to just kind of be quiet I guess maybe I was I don't know I can't even say like oh I was thinking loads or I was like in my head I wasn't I just felt quiet I don't even want to say it's pensive it's not like I was sitting there having lots of thoughts it was just 
an absence of thought almost an absence of of anything maybe just like recognition and not really feeling the need or desire to kind of articulate it if that makes sense Mm -hmm. I feel like talking and chit-chatting and would have kind of been to fill space rather than because I felt that I wanted to so it was a very quiet day we got up early to watch the sunrise which was was really really nice um and fulfilling so what Um, 9 (laughs) a.m yeah (laughs) the sunrise is so Um, late in the winter no it was like seven (laughs) okay so that was beautiful and this place that we like to go broadway in the cotswolds is just there's this valley like like hill and you're in a valley and just the way that the sun rises over the hill there is i don't know it's just like something else wow the colors are always magnificent And then we went later to another place and it got to about four and I just began to feel completely exhausted. Mm. And I just said to Alec, I think I need to stop. I'm feeling a bit kind of almost dizzy. It was it was weird. It wasn't like a big emotional day. It was a very physical day. I was much more in tune with like my body than I was with any kind of thoughts. I feel like I've thought everything there is to think about the situation I feel mm-hmm. like I've said everything mm-hmm. there is to say about the situation. It's now just learning to live with the settling of the situation into your life and into your story. And how do you do that? For me, it's so crazy that it's been two years because two years sounds like a really long time. Mm-hmm. And in many ways, it feels like it's been years and years and years. And I've lived a hundred lifetimes since. But most of all it feels like it just happened and I think that that's kind of when you are the person or one of the people that's super super close to the situation and not like an ancillary griever not to be you know um, not to diminish anyone's grief that's not what I'm saying it's just there are different circles aren't there there's like wife yeah mother father siblings there's and degrees, then it goes first out. degree, and second degree. It goes degree, out from yeah. there, yeah. You know, I feel like your family is your is all in there in the in the nut of the thing. I think that it's it's strange just to know that kind of it's probably going to feel like it just happened forever, mm-hmm. and that's that's a bit hard to kind of get my head around. It's a really confusing feeling. I don't know how to explain it. Um, I think anyone who's who has experienced like a a big big loss like that probably knows what I mean and then after a while you just kind of feel like maybe you made it all up and they were a daydream or something Mm. and and that's one of the scary things about about losing someone is that over time things do fade and it's about learning to accept that and not judge yourself for it and just know that that's the natural passing of time. Yeah, that's a good point. It's really hard to accept that. Yeah. And cuz you want to grip you want to grip on There's... and you don't want to let you just don't want to let any of it them go or Flip anything away. go. Yeah. You don't want to forget anything. No, but for your own sanity right. and your own life and your own health, you have to continue living and a natural part of that is that other things cement more in your life yeah um and and then i had some other really interesting kind of strange feelings of like obviously as time goes on less and less people will will remember the day and reach out to you and Mm -hmm. there's a pain in that because you feel like everyone's forgetting in your in like your initial um instinct but actually that's not what it is at all it's that people need to go go on living their lives and other than my closest friends and family I don't expect to hear from people Mm. every year I know that they are all thinking of Ryan and Max and that their hearts are aching for them and I trust that they know that mine is and that we don't need to necessarily connect over it every Mm -hmm. year um 
and that's fine and that's so that's that's an interesting place to come to as well and also just kind of wanting that natural progression because I don't want this to be the story of my life I don't want to be defined by this loss and by my position as Ryan's wife and then widow it is a part of my story it is not my story beginning middle and end and there's a there is a lot of weight and guilt that goes along with that because you feel like you're leaving them behind Mm -hmm. um it's hard to even say that stuff you know it feels like a betrayal of sorts but it has to be because otherwise you become like Miss Havisham and you just like Mm -hmm. wear your wedding dress in your house and go mad (laughs) yeah Queen Victoria yeah laid out Albert's clothes every day for the rest of her life and wore black for the rest of her life and mourned for the rest of her life and there is a part of you that wants to but then there's a part of you that wants to live and 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 take it off and get it away from you yeah. and just, and and you know I have days where I feel really angry at them for making this my story and I and I want them to get the fuck away from me right I, and that's that's a hard way to feel as well but I guess even when people are alive you don't want them to be smothering you exactly that's I think that's a really so, healthy aspect of it because just because somebody passes doesn't mean that the relationship stops evolving. It continues. No, it doesn't. Yeah. All aspects of a relationship are 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 valid. And that's yeah. it's not all just there are days where it's you're like get away from me just like you just said it just like you would if they were here. Yeah. You just can't help but feel like I know that so much of the judgment that I feel is my perception of other people's judgment. Obviously, there have Mm -hmm. been many instances of things that are are lived experience. um, And I prefer to always talk from that. But I don't know. It's just it's being a widow is really, really confusing and really hard. It really is. It's it's like being our relationship didn't end. So it's like you feel like you're betraying them by yeah you feel like you're cheating on them because you didn't break up so it's just confusing and then other people's perception of you like i just feel like people expect me to be like ryan's dutiful wife for the rest of my life and it's like i i can't and i don't want to i want to live my life i don't want to live that life so it really comes down to you and that i think might be i could imagine the hardest part like when do you call it yeah if you can even call Mm -hmm. it I can see how that could be so confusing when do you say I'm divorcing you now (laughs) or do you I don't know or can you or yeah I don't know I mean I think maybe some women probably do like I know for some women it's really important like they take their ring off really early and stuff like i know of several widows that have worn their ring for 10 years now yeah it's like they're not on the market they're not looking yeah everybody handles it in their own way but i didn't imagine that until you just said it there's no end it didn't end you're still married technically Mm. You didn't choose I mean, this. Technically, we're not, but spirit, like spiritually, I've you know you don't. No, spiritually, yeah, you're married, and now you're with someone new, and that's fucking confusing because it's kind of like piled on top of what already yeah. was there. It's like a new foundation over what's already mm. there, which is fine. That's how new civilizations are built. If you dig down, you see that there's like ten layers deep of these foundations. So that's the way that existence works. But what the f- <laughs> like how do you make sense of all that in your mind? I absolutely yeah, it's so confusing. Can imagine and then what I think saying. like okay. So like what if I want to marry Alec and then I'm not Ryan's wife anymore. I'm not Ryan's widow anymore. I'd be Alec's wife or 
And then it's like, is that okay? <laughs> are you <laughs> Alex? Know, it's, are I, you Alex's wife and Ryan's <laughs> widow? Yeah, are you... I guess I guess you are. Yeah, I guess you were formerly like widowed. Yeah, or are you just Alex's wife oh, and that's a, it? A wife. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, bitch. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I mean, I still feel like I would probably wear my wedding ring, my wedding ring to Ryan. Wow. Um, if I remarried. I could change my mind about that. I don't know. I still wear it. So yeah, girl, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm confused. It's I don't know where I'm going. I don't thing. know what's happening. It's very confusing. I'm gonna say something that's. I hope okay. Mm-hmm. It's just something that I've heard mentioned in various people's spiritual whatever. Blah 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 blah. That to identify as a widow is living in the past, which doesn't exist anymore. And so it's actually a state. They say any time that you're not in the present moment, you're in hell. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. you're disconnected. You're disconnected from the moment and the moment is all there is. And where does that leave it all? Because the feelings don't go away. Mm-hmm. And the process... And I'm very much of that mindset. I'm very much of that mindset. So I know you are. It's hard for me. Because I know I'm you like are. very much about the now. I know. So, and that's the, where my conflict comes in, where I'm just like, Ugh. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it, is because I'm just, I'm just lending it to the confusion, because I, I that's a crazy like between a rock and a hard place Mm -hmm. and 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 what's the answer come on jeff what is the answer we need it oh he is so unhelpful right now he's really bugging me he's just giving you all these esoteric you know yeah and he just keeps saying things which i know are right but i just want him to lie to me sometimes i mean jesus man i know what do i pay you for just say the truth to me Wow. And in this last session, in this last session, there was another thing like that where I was just like, (sighs) (laughs) can you just please? Can you just not today? Can you just lie? Just go like, it's okay. It's okay. (laughs) Oh, I know what it was. I was talking about my um, eating disorder stuff and I was just like I'm exhausted by this I'm so bored of it like when is it gonna end and he was like well it's gonna end when it's ready to end and I was like oh for fuck fuck I was like bitch not helpful (sighs) no and he's right (laughs) (laughs) it's like you know it's that thing I know he's right because it's something I say to people all the time like and it's something I said to myself is that I kept having the same person in my life again and again and again. We've talked about this. Mm-hmm. This is no different. They The issue will keep presenting itself again and again and again and again until you fully until, process and dealt with the issue. Until you call it. Yeah, until... Exactly. So, anyways, I just really wish that he had said something else. I was hoping for a date, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next Wednesday. Yeah, it will all be over. Just give me a day. Uh He said something else so interesting to me, which I didn't like, but I can kind of agree with. He said to me, the age of the empath is over. And I was like... What does that mean? I know. I said I don't like that. And I have to say that I think that a big part of the reason the world is in the situation that it's in is because we are suffering with a huge, huge lack of empathy. And he said... That's not what I'm saying. He said that the age of the empath is over in the sense that empathic people cannot save people anymore. We are past that point. Mm. And it's almost not about like empathic action anymore. It's about just like being loving and standing by because we've gone to a place where in society where it's like we're in the weeds and it's just gonna going have to play itself out like fucking buck wild and you can't just 
like empath people's shit away anymore. Peace and love isn't gonna um, save it. No, it's almost like peace and love is gonna save it. It's oh. it's <laughs> it's getting getting stuck in and like doing empathy on somebody has kind of lost its purpose and and lost its power and i would say i kind of agree looking at the world once i understood what he was saying i could un i got it i got where he was coming from is mm. when you look at the world there is a there is a distinct lack of empathic action where there should be in a place where you're like wow if someone had empathy in this situation you know it would be a lot easier and we can move through it differently mm -hmm. um but it's like they've all stepped back and gone you guys need to figure this out and we'll be here on the other end mm -hmm. which i guess is true is true empathy really it's like yeah, it is. i feel for the situation that you're in i'm right. with you in my heart and i'm here when you're ready like you said, when you're ready. <laughs> yeah, but but I, I won't fix it for you. So I found that really interesting. And I'm still tr kind of tr trying to digest that one. Because I don't like it. But I think it is a point. Huge point. Maybe Ringo was right all along. Peace and love. Peace, peace and, and love, love, baby. <laughs> peace and love. Ringo the sage. Yeah, well, it's definitely good advice for me, fucking exhausting myself trying to run around fixing everybody. I've really relinquished that, revoked yeah. that more and more, and whew, it's a happy life. It's better. Not my monkey, not my circus. Is that what they say? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll pick you up after? Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll be there. I'll be in the I'll be in the car park when you're ready. <laughs> I'll be outside when you Yeah. Have yeah, your exactly. I and I think that's what he means. Yeah. It's like kind of time for us to be like on standby a little bit cuz we we've gone so far as a society that we're kind of a little uh little far fucked. <laughs> But, oh God. Um, yeah. So, what's going on with you, Bish? Wow. How was your Thanksgiving? Because you came back from London, and then you arrived, and then the next morning you had to wake up and host Thanksgiving <laughs> for your whole family. I did. It was How a mess. How did you do that? So, what happened was my mom saved the day. She came over. So, she went food shopping. She did everything. Great. <laughs> Uh, so your mom, your mom hosted Thanksgiving at, at my house. house. Yeah, <laughs> it was really nice. We had a great time. We Good. played games and laughed and sang into the wee hours. It was oh, it's beautiful. It was wonderful. And I wanted to tell you that in a couple days, as my birthday gift to myself, I'm getting a past life regression. Oh my god, uh, that is so cool and scary. Are you scared? I'm so terrified. I don't want to. Can do you it. tell us what happens? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't. Um, can you tell us what that is? What does that mean? I don't know. Well, okay, no, I do know. I've read. <gasps> oh my god, we're finally gonna find out if I strangled you in Mexico. Yes. Not that we're gonna find out. We're gonna have it confirmed because you did. Okay. By the way, just in case anyone's forgotten, Lucy puts the blame for her dislike of mexican food onto the fact that she feels that i murdered her in mexico in a past life i literally don't understand this at all where it's come from i don't feel i lived in mexico but okay bitch whatever you fucking say you sacrificed me on the top of one of those pyramids with all the steps that go up it was a virgin sacrifice i was the virgin you were not you have never been a virgin <laughs> Well, I was when my name was Guadalupe. <laughs> oh, I see. The God complex is coming through. Here we go. So we'll have that confirmed, yes. Um, from what I have studied, past life regression is where you are working with someone who specializes in this. In my case, mm -hmm. it is my healer that I've worked with for 15 years now. And I've always wanted to do this with him. 
it's very pricey um, and I feel that my birthday is a perfect time to do it as I move into how this... much can you tell us how much it is it's like five hundred dollars for the hour no that makes okay that's good I thought you were gonna be like it's two thousand no <laughs> No, that's good. It's your yeah. it's your fortieth. Like that's so really yeah. that's like you yeah, you deserve that. Yeah, I know. If I'm it so was my fortieth, I would happily spend five hundred dollars on a present for myself. So. Absolutely. And it's not just for you. If you like divvy it up, it's for you and all of your past lives as well. So you can kind of oh, break it down true. in a financial plan. It's like it's actually <laughs> it actually is like evens out to like maybe five bucks each. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. I love, I love that. Yeah, that makes total sense. And (laughs) I don't know what to expect. I do know that um, I'm probably going to go through a death. Okay. Like I'm probably going to pass through a veil of some sort. That's what I've read in, I've read many accounts of past life regressions. There's a wonderful Mm. book. Um... There's one called Many Lives, Many Masters. There's one called Journey of Souls. Mm -hmm. So this is a very documented thing. And Mm -hmm. I'm very, very excited. And I feel that it's going to unlock a lot of things for me, I Mm -hmm. hope. I've really felt called to do it for a couple years now. And I Mm -hmm. think that is spirit urging you when it's time. Yeah. So I definitely think that there are things that I'm meant to uncover that will transform a lot of things for me because I've been going through a process of transformation really rapidly with the mm-hmm. leaving of of Gloria's yeah. high control group and shedding old relationships and moving into yeah. a new future and my new self and everything. And I think this will tie it all together and really um, allow the expansion to fully happen so i might um Love be a it. different person the next time you all hear us speaking i might no longer be lucy that's what i'm afraid of is like i'll go that's, like i won't come back happen. or something no it's not acid i know but i don't know is that happened to people no i mean all kinds of crazy shit happens you guys should read these books because it's pretty mind-blowing but it something's been happening to me lately at night where I am dying fuck okay and I'm moving and and I I think it's symbolic of a lot of ego death that's going on for me but I wake up and I'm it's happened four times now over the last couple of months, I'm, I'm dying and I'm leaving my body and I'm so terrified and it takes me a couple minutes to get myself of like conscious breath work and focus to get myself back in my body. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's terrifying. And, and how are you dying when you die? I'm awake and I'm laying there, but I'm moving towards like a black hole, it seems like. Ooh. And it's kind of like over a cliff and and I've got to pull myself back from that cliff and get my energy back into the body. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, that feels very me- like metaphorical. Yeah. And Will asked me what would happen if you went into it and you allowed mm-hmm. it. And I said... I'm too scared. I don't, I, 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 I would, I would die <laughs> is what it feels like. And yeah. I spoke to a friend of mine who just got back from an ayahuasca mission or whatever with um, an amazing guru in Costa Rica. Mm. And she said, it is the worst and the best thing you'll ever do. She said she yeah. died three times. And she said, when she went through the death, you finally understand what death really is. And you see that it's a huge waste of energy to to fight it. Mm. 
because it's so incredible on the other side. And you look back and go, wow, I didn't need to resist that so hard. But we're so terrified of the death Mm -hmm. that we resist it with everything we've got. And actually, a lot of how we live our lives is trying to outrun death. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 If you think about it. All of that, I feel there's something in this experience that's gonna make sense. God, I cannot wait to hear about that. With that, this last week, I did a nude photo shoot. Oh, bitch! What? It was so empowering and so freeing. Along with the dying dreams, I had a dream the night before the photo shoot. And I didn't know what the photo shoot was. I didn't know what the concept was, but it's a an amazing photographer friend of mine, and it's for a new show that she's doing. Mm -hmm. And the night before the photo shoot, I had this dream that I was in a city, and there were tigers everywhere, and I was walking the streets with these tigers. Mm. And as I move towards my birthday and stepping into this new age... I've been feeling like stepping into my true self and no longer pretending or having any Mm. phoniness about the way I express myself. And it's felt very animalistic to me. And our conversation last Mm. week was really hit me hard with us talking about our sensuality and Mm. living through our senses and coming back into our body. So this has all been on my mind. So this dream where I was mm-hmm. walking the streets with these tigers felt... Are you sure they weren't cougars? They were definitely tigers. <laughs> so then the next day at the photo shoot, she goes, so today this photo shoot is all about being primal and animalistic. And she said, I've been thinking about you and you seem like a cat. And so I wonder if you're open to this idea. I brought this tiger head that I want you to put on. And I was like, you're shitting me. I had this dream about being a tiger last night. And I put this tiger head on. And that's all I was wearing. And I had the best time. It was so amazing. And it just felt like, I don't know what it all means, but it was like, very... No, I love it. It's like in your body. Yeah. And there's the safety of like being in the tiger's head so you don't have to feel exposed. Yeah, you can Although just Although you're be... totally exposed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can totally see that. It was really cool. And then that. I took That's that so off funny. and she put me in this long wig that came down to like my thighs. So I looked like Fine. a cave woman. Mm-hmm. And she was like now you're an animal but also a woman and you're like seeing yourself and feeling yourself for the first time and that's exactly what I'm feeling like lately it was bizarre the whole thing was like a gift that had been brought to me to really allow me to put all this into my body physically and it tied in with our episode last time and it was just perfect oh I love it it was so powerful are we gonna get to see it yeah I saw an image it's amazing Show you want to see it? Yeah. I like it. You look demented. I know. I felt demented. Did it feel good, though, just to be a freak? It felt so good. I was so freaky. I was, like, crawling on the floor, just nudie. Just nudie pants. Good. I think that's so good for you, especially given that the conversation that we had. I know. Like, yeah, that's kind of like the sex I had. Really? Yeah. I can't really talk about it. Why not? I don't know. It just feels too private. It's just like... I love that about you. I love that side of you where you're like this big talker. You're this big talking (laughs) broad mouthed bitch. And then you have such like a proper um, respectful, like you're so respectful of like the old fashioned ways of like being a lady i love that about you it's such a perfect mix okay well we will respect that even though we're dying to know the juicy details but we can imagine i'll i'll tell you privately oh that's no fun (laughs) (gasps) there's a ghost behind you you. privately no shut up 
Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> it's my puppy. You scared me, bitch. Oh, the door swung open. <laughs> Come here. We have a special <laughs> guest. Are you our special guest? And then the other incredibly exciting thing that's on my mind today is that last night yeah. I spoke to my number one favorite director in the world in a way that was completely different from how I might have approached him in the past. Okay. Who? I spoke to Ron Howard. Shit, bitch. I know. I went to the Willow premiere with our friend Chelsea Hamill. Mm-hmm. What's Willow? Sorry. What's Willow? I know. I don't know anything. You're the only one in this conversation of all our listeners and everyone who doesn't know what Willow is. Should we tell her? Mm-hmm. Willow yes. is a movie in the 80s that you need to watch. That's all I can say about okay. it. And Ron Howard directed okay. it. And this is the television series. Oh, amazing. Yeah, and Chelsea, you know, Chelsea's like in, grew up in the business, so nothing, she's like yeah. not phased by anything. And she was like, oh, yeah. come with me to this screening. <laughs> well, it wasn't a screening, it was a premiere, which is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, here I am, like different. in jeans and like everybody else is in ball gowns. Yeah, you're like ready for the screening. I got some popcorn in my purse. <laughs> They're in like tuxedos and I'm in flip flops. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like, bitch. Uh, So we get there, and we're walking along the red carpet. And I look over, and Ron Howard's, like, right next to me. And I literally jumped. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh! That's crazy. (laughs) So in the past, I would have had this desperate feeling come up of, like, I need to talk to him. I I have an agenda. Uh, 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 uh," You know? And I didn't feel Mm -hmm. any of that. I just appreciated the moment and was like, wow. That's, like fucking ron howard <laughs> that's so cool it was it was so you were just like in your body yeah just as you yeah not as like being or doing anything yeah just, like, and then fuck, right next like, to yeah. him was his partner brian grazer who i'm also a massive massively influenced by i've read all their books mm-hmm. you know what i mean like they are the reason that i'm an actor yeah one of those but yeah Gosh, right away so As we kept walking right away, I noticed the difference in the feeling. And I observed that and I just thought, wow, look at you. Like, that's a totally different place you're existing in. And also when I went to the nude photo shoot, the photographer, she had shot me last year or two years ago. And she said, was that for that dancing thing that you did? Yes. With the bat. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. She shot me two years ago and she said, you were so much more tortured two years ago. Like you're mm. you're in such a good place now. Your energy is completely mm. different. She's like, it's not as interesting yeah. on camera. <laughs> She's like, you're too like you're too good now. Can you go back to being tortured? Because it looks way better on camera. Mm-hmm. And I was like, good thing I'm an actor. Yes, I can give you tortured. It was the same thing I observed in myself as I passed Ron Howard mm. on that red carpet. Just like this wholeheartedness that I'm existing in more now. Mm. And the desperation wasn't there. And so then we went in. We had a lovely time. I saw so many friends. Um, it was so inspiring. And we get to the after party and Ron Howard's there. And mm-hmm. everybody's talking to him. Met so many great people, actors. I was standing there talking to Christian Slater. Oh my god, cool. All these really cool people. And and I see Ron Howard and I go, the reason I had something to say to him was because I just recently pitched my letters television series to his team. And so I was like, hmm, okay, well, you know what? If If we're like standing next to each other or something, I'd love to say hello, whatever. And then he goes over into this little corner by himself and he takes a plate of pizza. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go in. (laughs) I'm going to go for it. Pounce. Yeah. So I walked over and I just said, I introduced myself and I said, can I talk to you while you eat your pizza? (laughs) And I introduced myself and we started talking and... And um, I told him who my uncle was because he just did a a documentary on the Beatles. Mm -hmm. 
And I told him that I had just pitched my television show to his, his guy. Company. And mm-hmm. and we were we were we were just talking and he said, Can I give you some advice? And I said, <gasps> Yes. That's how lovely he is. He's such a generous person that even at a party where everybody's talking to him, he's still like engaged and and has something to offer you. Not everybody's like well, and that. Is, and also is respectful and says, "Can I give you some advice?" I know. Amazing guy. And he said, "Get your thoughts and your ideas down on that paper at all cost. That is yes. your power." That is your currency in this business. And the more you get down on that paper, the more powerful you are. And I said, wow, thank you. That's amazing advice. And and coming from somebody who's created more films than pretty much anybody in our business. Mm. And um, he asked me what my first name was again and and asked me for my name again. And and then he left the party. He left. He was leaving Mm -hmm. for the night. And I was just like walking around with the biggest smile on my face. Good. I couldn't that's believe so it. Lovely. I couldn't believe I it. That. It was so exciting. It meant so much to me. Do you know, Lucy, that's the first time you've ever told me about something like that. And all I can feel from you is the joy of the experience, not any other motive angle or like you said like there's no desperation in what you're saying there's no like it needs to be anything and and I I know that me saying that could sound harsh it's not meant to sound harsh it's meant to be a a real recognition of the fact that you felt it very differently and I feel it in your telling of it very Mm. very differently than any other experience like that right that you've shared and there have been many oh yeah 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 yeah. like your joy is at the front exactly and that's like the point (laughs) it is it's a happy life and it ties into many previous conversations we've had about the desperation that people feel to push their agenda and I functioned that way for so long where Mm. I I had to get that Academy Award before I was worthy before I was worthy of joy before I was worthy of rest before I was a real person and we've had full episodes on that conversation yeah and so to feel the difference now and you're right like I can't stop smiling, not because anything will come from it, but because of that experience was so lovely. Lovely. Oh, so. That's so nice. And you know, what's really interesting. I've noticed the last couple of times that we've spoken, you look very different. Wow. People are saying that a lot. You really look different. You remember a few weeks ago, I was like, have you had Botox Mm. and filler? And you were like, no, I fucking haven't. I was like, you look like you've had something done to your face. Yeah. Like, you look really different. I can see the changes on your face. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I hope this has taken, in a way, all of this, where it's not so much about me specifically, but this is what happens when we work on ourselves. (laughs) This is the blossoming of those seeds that we spend so much time planting. And I'm talking to all our listeners because we get so much feedback of people going through the same things. So I hope that it it translates to like people relating to that desperation that we all feel in our own ways to like be something, to be something. Yeah. It should be be, do, have. And a lot of us are existing in have, do, be. Have it first, maybe do it, and be last. But when you're coming from be first, then do, and then you'll have. Then you'll have the the crop that you planted. You don't get the crop first. You fucking have to plant the field first. (laughs) Yeah, and you have to prep the soil. Yes! You have to fucking do all that shit. It's interesting because I think it ties into what we were saying before about living in the moment and like 
I feel like the essence of what you're saying is and the joy from that experience is the fact that you were in the moment not thinking about what could be in the future you just were in the moment that's right and essentially when you're constantly thinking about those things and living that way you are robbing yourself of your now time experience and you know it's that classic expression if you're not happy with what you've got today what makes you think you'll be happy with more tomorrow and there is there is an element of that in the kind of desperation that artists feel I think especially I think LA really really um nurtures that desperation because it does the executives and the companies they want you to feel desperate because then you feel like you'll do anything yeah and they want you to feel that way because then they can control you yeah I really felt it last night it was very uncomfortable I saw all around me the vibe in LA is everybody's looking over their shoulder and it was interesting who's who Mm -hmm. yes who's in the room who do I need to talk to and who are you I was Chelsea's plus one right so people are talking to Chelsea because her dad's Mark Hamill and Mm -hmm. a lot of people there knew her and and your dad's just Joe Walsh yeah my dad's just fucking (laughs) chopped liver and but nobody knows that and they they, it's it's amazing to observe people discard you yeah immediately yeah if they don't know that you could serve a purpose for them you are invisible Mm -hmm. to them and Mm -hmm. i've never seen it before in la because i grew up here so it's been normal to me yeah and when will came into my life and started going oh my god this is actually cuckoo bananas i started going what do you mean and seeing it differently and last night it was highly uncomfortable but but valuable to see very that, valuable especially during during this period where you're really um growing yeah because that's so. a reflection of like what you're you're like oh yeah that is not what i want to do or be that is i am on the right track going in this other yeah direction yeah and then you just trust that what's meant for you is yeah and the people that love you you don't have to convince anybody to love you and you don't have to push but a lot of what was hammered into me in Gloria's group was that pushing that pushing yes. that agenda that marketing yourself that promo mm. at all times it is a living hell and it's not and it's helpful cringe. and no it's so cringe nobody wants to hire that person and when you no. go, like i don't care what came from last night when you go away from ooh who's going to hire me and you just focus on connecting with lovely people miracles mm. happen oh lucy i'm so happy for you cuz you're finally open to what the universe is trying to give you it's trying to hand you your dreams on a silver platter and you're going with your fists closed no no my agenda's fine for me yeah. no thanks no thanks and it's like okay but imagine <laughs> imagine thinking you're so important that you think that you can push the universe or god into imagine. what you think should happen <laughs> imagine yeah that's okay yeah good use of time but we all but we do it especially when we're trying to come into a uh, movie industry or music industry we're like no this is is i thank god every day i i didn't have the life i was pushing for i am so grateful that i got my record deal i had my experience and then i got the fuck out I thank God every day that I'm I'm not famous. I am so (laughs) relieved because now I just know that that just wasn't for me. It just isn't, it was never for me and it never should be. It's not. It's only the ego that has an agenda. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's where all the ego death stuff is happening for both of us you've had a massive ego death on various levels and i would say your life is transforming and blossoming like a garden as well Mm. in ways that you never would have expected looking back no no well i just i think it's my true heart's desire exactly was like no this other thing actually Mm mm-hmm not that this and we waste most of our lives sometimes hanging on with both hands to the ego's Mm -hmm. agenda 
and therefore your hands aren't free to take what the universe is offering you. And that's a beautiful gift that Ryan and Max have given me. And it's a beautiful gift that Gloria has given you. It is. Is that is your journey that you are now on and your ability to be so much more experienced, so much more live a much more fulfilling and authentic life, which you may never have done had you not found yourself in that situation. I wouldn't have. Because you wouldn't have had to have hit rock bottom and do the recovery that you're doing now. No. I wouldn't take it back for anything. <sighs> yeah. Fuck. That Shall we do the news? Heavy. <laughs> it's not world news. It's oh, that's, that's your news. line. <laughs> what is going on over there with you and the dog? I feel like you two are like... She's ice skating she's so like she's like all loved up with me right now she's been so lovey dovey with me i love it because sometimes she's like don't touch me okay wait we did it it's wrong it's not world news it's, it's not, not a... world news oh shit <laughs> go again it's not <laughs> it's not world news it's not important news it's it's listening about, about news, news. <laughs> got for us annabelle sadie jones what have i got for us here we go okay so you i don't even need to look at my phone i'll just talk about it um <laughs> we've come to this we're not even reading headlines anymore you guys may or may not have seen this but balenciaga the brand the fashion brand has come under huge scrutiny huge attack because they posted their um they posted their holiday campaign okay. a week ago. And it featured children in situations like in rooms, bedrooms or um, living rooms. And there was like champagne glasses around, empty bottles, beer cans. And they were holding teddy bears who there is a um, new bag that Balenciaga is bringing out, which is the bondage teddy bear. It's a teddy bear in bondage. And the children were, were were holding the teddy bears who were wearing bondage in the rooms that were full of like alcohol or like and mess and whatever. What are they doing? I know it was such a fucking stupid thing to do. So anyway, obviously people freaked out. They took it down immediately, and were like, "We released a statement saying, oh, 'Oh, we're looking into how this could have ever happened.'" And it's oh, like, right. Hey, we, You've been planning this for months. Do you know how many people had to see, that? like, how many people were even on set when you were doing this? Does nobody think, like, this is not going to Someone go will take the well. fall. Someone will take the fall for it. Yeah, someone will. Um, but obviously, a lot of people are speaking out, and then a lot of people aren't speaking out. Um, Kim Kardashian, who is a huge, I would say, like, muse and almost, like, creative partner at this point for Balenciaga. She released a statement being like, I'm looking into what's happened and I'm thinking about options or whatever. Instead of just being like, this is a disaster, this should never have never happened and I'm cutting ties with Balenciaga. I don't know how I feel about it and I'll tell you why. I wasn't super offended by the images. Mm -hmm. I can understand why people were offended by the images. I wasn't surprised. And the reason I wasn't surprised is because in the way that Donald Trump kind of showed the world a side of America that we had all pretended wasn't there for a long time, mm -hmm. I think that what Balenciaga did was almost like so irony-pilled that it was truthful. In the sense that, I've said this before, I don't believe that governments care about children and the welfare right. of children. Children are in the modelling industry. Many of those young girls that you see are are children. They're not just 18-year-olds or 16-year-olds. They're like 12, 14-year-olds doing photo shoots, doing catwalks. The stuff that those kids are exposed to is fucking insane. Mm -hmm. They are they have eating disorders forced on them they're sexually assaulted drugs they're told to take pills to come up they're told to take pills to come down i feel like what the campaign was was just the truth mm. but people don't like it and people are, are outraged by it because they prefer it when we don't 
tell the truth. And I don't know if that was the point of the campaign, was to make a point of, like, our culture has gone so crazy and celebrity culture and um, consumerism has gone so crazy that we are so desensitised that seeing that kids are in this environment and we're so used to seeing, like, the Kardashians' kids being dressed up like whatever. I don't see any difference between the Balenciaga photos and photos I've seen for, like, J. Crew kids wear, where the girls are wearing makeup and false eyelashes and they look like little beauty queens. Yeah, or the little beauty queens, I was going to say, which is so demented. So I think it's just very interesting that, as always, this is always my point with everything, is like the selective outrage about this. I don't like the campaign and I think it sucks and I think Balenciaga is going weird and I usually like really weird, like subversive things, but Mm. it's just to the point where it's almost like, I don't think that they're trying to be ironic anymore. I think they have just like gone down a weird path. Mm. Um, So it's really interesting to listen to everybody's like hot takes on it because as we know, growing up in the industry, it was very common to wake up and for there to be alcohol, empty bottles around and... For us to see inappropriate things yeah. and drug paraphernalia and women partially clothed and for that to be very much in our face. I mean, I went to a premiere for a movie that my dad did and the after party was at this club, this like kind of gay club. I don't even want to say gay. I guess the word for it now would be like queer. It was all types of every type of person. And there were men wearing like bondage and they were n- naked and they were just wearing bondage so their butt cheeks were out everything was out there was lots of pleather there was drag queens there was all kinds of things and i was at the height where it's like everyone's dick was like this in my face i don't feel traumatized by that event i think it's hilarious i'll remember it for the rest of my life and i think actually it was good for me because i was like oh this is mm. interesting this is another type of person that, mm-hmm. that exists on the earth mm-hmm. i don't feel there are some things we experience that i feel like that shouldn't have happened or like men who have done weird things to me that I'm like that was that was a line that was a boundary that was yeah. assault but stuff like that I, I I just don't feel traumatized by it I feel like it showed me all these different types of people in the world and for that reason I'm not surprised or offended by almost anything that's a good point because I saw a lot yeah at, at a young age you know we're not delicate little flowers and we live no. in a, <laughs> we're not delicate flowers. We live in a world full of all types of different people. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel a little bit like Balenciaga did a campaign that was a little bit too close to the truth and people are freaking out about it. Yeah. I don't think it's right, but I, that's just kind of how I feel about it. But you look it up and tell me what you think right now. Go on your phone and have a look at the... Okay. Because um, I'd love to hear your reaction. Yeah, I was going to say, is it still visible because they took it oh, down oh yeah i'm sure people i'm sure Balenciaga um, scandal here it is yeah that's <laughs> that's pretty fucked up i mean how do you explain bondage to a kid i mean you don't you just it's what do you do when they're like mommy what's that on the teddy bear why is the teddy bear dressed like that it's its outfit <laughs> that's how it was explained to me Mommy, why are the men wearing leather fucking studded thongs? Why do they have spikes on their willies? It's their outfit. It's their outfit. It's their outfit. Yeah, I mean, you have a point. It's not like there's like heroin needles or like cocaine or... Okay, so there's the bondage bear, there's alcohol glasses, and there's like collars and stuff on this table. Yeah. Mixed in with other things like barrettes and necklaces, but... I mean, when you're on a shoot, a big shoot for anything like that... There's hundreds of people. (laughs) Hundreds of people. Did nobody look at it and go, hmm. Yeah. (laughs) That's, That's really bizarre. I feel like they probably did and they were told to shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. There's no way that of all of the people that saw the planning for that, nobody and of all said the people anything. that were on the set, that nobody was like, do we think this is going to go down well? Or There's no way. No, no way. Because I would have been like, 
Um, <laughs> can we talk about this for a second? And yeah. then, like, what about the parents of the act of the little model they hired? <laughs> Did they have no problem with anything? Well, we all know how that shit goes. Yeah, we do. Those those kids are paying the bills, so no, I know. they don't have a problem question. with anything. Wow. Well, I think it's a bit much for me. I think I, I, I think I have a problem with it, but yeah. I get what you're saying, too, that it is definitely... I don't think it's... Sh- it's ahead of its time <laughs> in a society that is um, not amused by the truth. I don't... Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think I think it's... Um, I don't like to see it. I don't think it should have come out. But I guess more what I disagree with is, like, the hypocrisy of the outrage. Well, I disagree with cancel culture, so I don't, I, I don't think it's appropriate to cancel them for that right i absolutely disagree with cancel culture i'm just gonna die on that hill right now i'm gonna die on that hill right now (laughs) i would love to hear like every like the people who were all involved like with no like gun to their head just like what was your like mindset when you did this yeah not like what were you thinking no but like tell me louis let's louis through that shit yeah what was going through your head, guys? What, how yeah, you talk to me. This? Tell me. Tell me how that day on set was. Talk me through it. <laughs> Let's get them on the show. You know I can do it. Right. Tell me your news. Okay. My news is equally as thrilling, as I always say. So an angler, right? Somebody angling in a river, if you will, Fishing, found yeah. a message in a bottle in Maryland. Oh, my God. That's so great. You know I love my letters, my messages. Okay. Um, a Virginia angler casting his line in the Chesapeake Bay said he found he, he caught a message in a bottle. Gregory D'Alessio. He said something really weird. He said he didn't want to open the bottle at first because he assumed the letter was personal and he didn't want to pry. It seemed disrespectful. Are you That's a so cute. dumbass? It's a message in a bottle. What do you think they it's did meant it for? It's to be found. Yeah. <laughs> you? I was like, That's uh, so cute. Okay. But then he did open it, and it ended up being an obituary for a woman named Emma Jean Ennis, who died at the age of 82 in 2021. Oh, wow. I know. There was a phone number on it that said for anybody who found it to contact them. And he did, and the person responded and was very grateful and told him that it made their Thanksgiving. And then he put it back in the water and sent it on its way. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. It was nice. That made me happy. It reminds me of um, something that one of our listeners sent, I think, to me, to my account, that was kind of really similar to that story. Hmm. Um it was a guy, an actor guy, who had lost his dad, and it was the death anniversary or like the birthday of the dad. So him and his kids took a photo, like a photo of themselves, and sent a text message to the dad's old phone number, mm. which mm. I totally get. Like I want to text Ryan all the time. Oh yeah. And they'd never done that before, and they did it, and they got a response back, and the wow. response was like, "Hey." My name is blah, blah, blah. I think this has been sent to the wrong number. And the guy responded who sent the message and said, I was like, I just wanted, you know, this was my dad's number and, you know, whatever. Good, you know, have a nice day. Not not expecting to hear anything back. And then the person responded and say, hey, I just recently lost my mother and I know, I know how you feel and you can text this number anytime and I won't <gasps> respond. <laughs> I watched it and I was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, wow! I give me chills just thinking about it. Again. Ooh, that's a good one. It really is. <sighs> that stuff is so nice. I know. It's cute. It's really cute. Should we do listener feedback? Let's do it. One listener says the Lucy and Annabelle show not just touching on taboo subjects but groping them, <laughs> giving them a big sniff. <laughs> I love it. I believe that these are healthy and desperately needed conversations. We do too. Yes. <laughs> we do. Another listener sent us an article regarding our conversation in last episode about a sex therapist. The 
article says people who have less sex or don't masturbate are more likely to go through early menopause. <gasps> she said, OMG girls, please read this. Please do sex therapy. I've been wanting to do this also. And this article freaking stresses me out. <laughs> It says researchers at University College London found that people who engage in sexual activity once a week have a lower risk of entering early menopause than those who don't. Shit, bitch. If someone's not having sex, the body senses that a pregnancy is unlikely and stops wasting resources ovulating. Oh my god. Lucy, you better, when we finish this podcast, you better go and have a wank. Will? <laughs> I need you. Okay, bye. <laughs> He's going to come in here. Just kidding. <laughs> I need to have sex with you. Are you still fucking recording? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you we need to have sex right now. What are you doing, you weirdo? It's a matter of health. I, I'm going to go into early menopause if we don't have sex. What are you talking about? We'll because my body will think that I'm never going to get what pregnant. Voyage. We don't need to shut the computer. It's fine. No, I want to okay. watch. Annabelle wants to watch. Right. Um, what? So this, you don't need me. Give me five minutes. Later. <laughs> Get ready. I'll be so, right in. I'm so sorry, Annabelle. You're <laughs> sorry. She's the one egging me on. She's me you're both mental. <laughs> I mean, we're not mental. Other people agree with us. You were saying, another listener said. <laughs> well, he's like, you two are mental. <laughs> Hi, ladies. I wanted to thank you for being so open and honest about yourselves yet again, particularly about sex topics and looking into a sex therapist. I could relate to you both in different ways this week in the area. And I just wanted to share a little bit about my story, which I do talk about with my own therapist as well. Good for you, girl. Yeah. I haven't really had the healthiest relationships either, especially when it comes to sexual ones, which mainly happen to be with boyfriends I've had. I've had a few friends with benefits, but being intimate in relationships has just mostly been my thing. No judgment, though. I never had a problem with touch, and I use it a lot to express my feelings and always appreciated and liked when others would do that with me too. When touch or sex lacks in a relationship, there's usually something wrong either with the relationship or sometimes with me. It makes me feel unwanted and I'm not sure I've ever had a good or healthy relationship. It's it's tricky because I think it can be a sign that that there is something wrong. I think that I think that sometimes when we don't want to have sex with our partner it's because we don't want to have sex with our partner. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong with us as people, with as individuals. True. It really can be a, a, a flat, like a warning flag. And I think it's really important to examine that. It's true. And it, like introspect and go like, is this like a me thing? Or is this a relationship thing? And I don't think the answer will come just right away like that. I think it comes from a lot of like, we always talk about like, self kind of evaluation introspection and just like kind of chipping away at it and just going through the motions of that feeling yeah and our tendency is to blame everything on ourselves so initially yeah. we go oh it must be something wrong with me instead of taking a look at the relationship that's so true yeah yeah and, I, and it's hard because nobody wants to think there's something wrong with their relationship no especially when they love the person they're with because mm -hmm. I personally feel like in most breakups it's not from a lack of love I've had relationships where that's taken months and years um and then I've had relationships where I've known that there was something wrong with the relationship but I just I couldn't I just couldn't admit it yeah. I, could, I was so I want I loved the person I wanted it to work I I, I wanted it to work. It's what we were talking about. I was pushing, pushing, pushing my agenda and and it just wasn't right. Oh, God, me too. <laughs> oh, you ignore so many red flags. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's really, I think that's a really great bit of listener feedback there to add to that conversation. Me too. This listener had a lot to say. And then at the end, she just says, I really want to thank you both for talking so openly and honestly about your own experiences on things. 
Love you. Another listener says, When someone you love dies, the wound will eventually heal, but the scar will go with you everywhere. I love the way mm. Annabelle is handling her life. What an honor to play at Wembley. Yes, Will played at Wembley. It was fantastic. I do believe that when we make love, unlike having sex, which is more an animal thing, we are more vulnerable and fragile as not only our bodies mm. are exposed, but our souls as well. Love you, girls. Mm. Wow. Mm. Agree. Good stuff. Woo! Well, Lucy, I feel tired. I feel exhausted. I have the whole day ahead of me. And you have to have sex with your husband. So I know, I'm to... in bed already. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, that high neck cable knit jumper is really going to get him going. It really is. I got it for two pounds in England at a thrift store. <laughs> and I, I love imagining the grandma that had it before me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really setting the scene for me for the sex you're about to have. I know, but it's like Edwardian, like edwardian virginal sexy because like the collar is knitted but then this bit is see-through so i just feel like a blushing bride (laughs) that's exactly how i imagine you just an innocent blushing bride okay i think we covered it yeah that's the show that's it guys that's all we got (laughs) I'm sorry that sorry that the Jeff feedback this week is just when it's done. <laughs> oh, I love the Jeff. I love the Jeff feedback. When is it going to be over? When is your problem going to be over? When you're ready for it to be over? <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> okay, my darling. I love you. I love you too. See you again in the future. <laughs> Or the past. Whoa. Whoa, if I ever come back. Oh, fuck you. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Hi, gorgeous listener. We love when you stay connected with us on social media. Follow us at The Lucy Walsh, OK Annabelle, and The Lucy and Annabelle Show. Also, rate and review the show on Apple Music if you haven't yet. Love you. Oh, 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 oh,